Hello, everybody. Hello. Hi. Hi. Hello. Salutations. <laughs> Jesus greetings. Uh, <laughs> welcome, welcome, welcome. So um, let's go around the, the horn and uh, introduce yourself. And we will introduce your characters in a little bit. But just just introduce yourself where people can find you. And, uh, and we'll go from there. Let's start um, to my left. Eric. Uh, hello, everybody. I'm Eric. Uh, you can find me mostly Eric on all the social medias and you know, and like all kinds of you throw it throw a, a dart. You'll probably hit a show on Saving Throw Show that I'm on. So go for that. Uh, Connie. Hey, everyone. I am Connie. My pronouns are they, he, and she. You can find me all across the internet at by Connie Chong. That's B-Y-C-O-N-N-I-E-C-H-A-N-G. But I'm not here guesting on Saving Throw Show and uh, being on this really awesome channel. Uh, I am the game master and creative producer for Transplaner RPG, which is an all-transgender POC-led D&D show set in an original dark fantasy, non-colonial, anti-orientalist world. So it's basically like the L word, but a lot more diverse meets the literal end of the world. If that's interesting to you, you should check us out Saturdays at 8 p.m. U.S. Eastern Time on twitch.tv slash transplaner RPG. And I'll pass things along over to CB. Oh, hey. Uh, hey, hello, hi. Uh, my name is Omega Jones, also known as the Critical Bar, Critical Bar across all social media channels. <gasps> I'm an active vocalist, tabletop professional, hot mess and kind of jack of all trades, master of like three of them. And uh, my pronouns are he and they. Uh, I do way too much on the interwebs, uh, way too much out, off, off of the interwebs. And now I'm here. Doing more things on the wind web. <laughs> that, 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 that's me. <laughs> awesome. Drac. Hi, I'm Drac or Draconics. You can find me on Twitter at Draconics. It's D-R-A-K-O-N-I-Q-U-E-S. I kind of stream all over the place. So just follow me on Twitter. It's the best place to find out what I'm doing at any given moment. I use he, they pronouns. Um, and yeah, no, I'm just very excited to play. <laughs> very excited to play with everyone and this character as well, who we're going to introduce later. Awesome. Um, and I just want to say, so uh, if you're watching this, uh, odds are that you are not an active sustaining supporter. And that's just the facts. Out of 55,000 people who follow us on various things, less than half a percent actually uh, support us as a sustaining member. That's 0.4% if we're being exact. So less than 300 people <laughs> out of 55,000 plus. Uh, and if you think to yourself, well, you know, someone else will come by and tip or, you know, give a big whatever, uh, we can't ever count on that. So uh, I encourage you to share this stream with friends, uh, share share what we're doing, share our coffee out with, with people. Um, even if you can't support us, that's no worries. Do what you can. Uh, and um, it's all appreciated. So so thank you so much. Um, okay. Let's, why not, get started. As you see, we are missing one uh, uh, player. Abria is not with us. Um, she may come later. Uh, uh, we'll, we will see. Um, so uh, let's get started. We open in a serene coastal landscape. There are, um, the water is absolutely placid. Uh, there's hardly a ripple and the architecture is uh, stately and um, interwoven with the land and the nature around it. And it almost looks like it is a piece of um, the land. And a boat, swan-like, long and uh, slightly off-white, um, both from construction and from the salt air that has interacted with it, uh, with a long triangular sail, uh, tall, billowing in the wind, pulls up to the dock, and several elves go and tie it up, and three figures disembark from that. Um, let's, let's introduce these figures, shall we? Starting with... Uh, Glorfindel. 
Sure, yeah. Glorfindel is kind of at the prow of the ship, I think one foot upon the mast, uh, the masthead at the very front. Uh, they've got like their uh, hands propped on their hips and they're casting like a very stately, serene, regal look over the dock proceedings, as it were. They're nodding at the elves, sort of like pulling on the shrouds and the rigging and they're going, very good, very good, nice, good shroud work, yes. <laughs> oh, it's been a long time since I've used my hands to do things that weren't, you know, striking down a god or something equivalent. Uh, very, very nice. Uh, and they hop off of the prow of the ship and land on the harbor. And as we pan up their body, we see these like, this plate armor that seems welded from pieces of cloud and divine radiance sundered together. They have this gleaming, pure white, uh, heavenly plate uh, with these various embroidery and like golden etchings upon it. And this like silken, golden bright uh, dawn, a uh, loud cape just streaming past their shoulders. They have this dark obsidian hair pulled up into a ponytail and these elf ears that sort of like taper upward and are like sharply uh, cut back across their face, uh, almost like knives uh, is how sharp they are. Yeah. Uh, their face is like a, a mixture of handsome kind of like granite and like a marble-esque like uh, uh, considerations, almost like they were a statue uh, yeah. carved by like a demigod or something. They don't look real. They look like someone like d decided to paint like a painting of maybe one of the most beautiful people to have ever existed, and then like peeled it off the page and plopped it uh, like onto onto like actual soil. They have a like long long sword strapped to their waist uh, in a hilt. Uh, in a scabbard that looks like it probably could buy a castle, uh, <laughs> and a longbow also strapped to their back and a quiver. Mm -hmm. um, but there are surprisingly few arrows in that quiver, maybe only like five or six, not too many. Uh, yeah. And as they look around, their like long black hair sort of sweeps past uh, their cape and they're like sort of nodding. Awesome. Yes. Yes. All of that. 100%. Glorfindel is a paragon among elves, which is saying something uh, as the elves are paragons themselves uh, in many ways. But uh, above all else, Glorfindel is the mightiest of elves. Uh, and uh, just a little backstory. Glorfindel uh, was there at the beginning, uh, the beginning of the world. Um, and uh, with their fellow elves traveled uh, and was discovered by the gods, basically sent to Valinor, then came back to Middle Earth, fought valiantly in the War of Wrath and, and, and other battles, died fighting a Balrog. Uh, that's how badass they were. Then they went back, basically, to Valinor and uh, heaven, as it were. And for a thousand years, they resided and uh, were content and at peace until the gods came back and said, you know what? <laughs> we need help. And they re-embodied Glorfindel and gave them more powers than any other elf. And Glorfindel is the mightiest of all elves and uh, has been sent along with some others. Uh, Palando, tell us what you're doing and uh, what you well, look like. <laughs> quite the opposite of uh, Glorfindel. Uh, Palando is dressed in traveler's garbs. He is an incredibly unassuming looking uh, sort of middle age, older gentleman uh, wearing uh, blue, but it's just like it clothes that are not threadbare, but are not the most expensive in the world. They look like they're functional clothing for keeping one dry and warm in, in most climates. Uh, but Palano is, uh, has spent probably most of the trip going around, looking at everything, studying, like he, he basically memorized everything on the boat. He wanted to know everything about it because he'd never had eyes before. So I'm <laughs> sure now that we are in dock in, in this place, he is questioning everyone, questioning every elf about every decision they're making whenever they're tying a knot. He's asking why this knot and not this one. He is just constantly going around asking everyone, just, just gathering as much information as he can about his surroundings because he's never had a body before. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Palando is uh, what uh, we call a Maiar, which is essentially a demigod. Um, 
And Polando is also a member of the Astari, which are the wizards, uh, who are all Maiar, including the infamous Sauron. Uh, and uh, Polando was a Maiar of Aule, Aule being the smith god. Um, we will skip over Alatar, but there's another blue wizard named Alatar. Uh, who steps off the Another boat. Another blue wizard? Don't be calling me a blue wizard. Yo, you're, not a, you're not a blue wizard. You're a white wizard. You, exactly. You <laughs> called me blue. I'm like, ew. No, I was talking about Alatar. You're not oh. on the boat. Sorry. Oh, you're right. You're right. Oh, you're right. My bad. My bad. No my worries. Bad. No worries. No. <laughs> um, <laughs> you got offended. Ew. Yeah, hold like, on. Gross. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to be blue. Ugh. That's the most Saruman thing you could do. That, yeah, that was... <laughs> I assume they're talking about me. 100 percent uh speaking of so greeting these uh these wizards and this elf there are uh three figures on the dock um one is tall and stately and holds himself in a very proud manner he has a golden wreath around his head dark hair and um just a very uh regal sense about him and this is the Elven High King Gilgalad, and he is joined by another elf who has uh, actually kind of grayish silver hair, looks relatively old actually, um, uh, which is not something that you are uh, any of you are really aware of elves being, uh, and um, this person has somewhat grayish robes on and uh, is almost the opposite of Gilgalad in in terms of of color and positioning and everything. He is this is uh, Kirden, the shipwright, who uh, is weathered from being out on boats and uh, um, just out in in the wilds. Kirden is the oldest elf on Middle Earth. Um, Older than Glorfindel, older than uh, anyone, <laughs> basically. Um, oldest elf currently on Middle Earth. There are elves that are older, but the, he's the oldest elf currently on Middle Earth. Um, and there's one more person clad all in white, and that is Sauron. Describe yourself. No. Um, <laughs> yeah, I think you all see an individual who... It's kind of just staring stoic, also clearly reading each of you. Um pretty tall in, in, in height. Um as they as Dom said, they're wearing flowing white uh garb, um, a mix of a wizardy robe and perhaps something more. Um they have long um white hair um flowing down. Uh, almost shoulder, uh, no, definitely past shoulder length. Um, mm -hmm. While they have some gray in their um, their eyebrows and their and their beard and their mustache, you still get that they're still young, but not uh, older than you, but still young. <laughs> um, uh, the eyes tell many different stories, none that he will reveal to you at this moment. Yeah, uh, and he has in his hand a long, uh, blackish, grayish metal staff of sorts that kind of wraps around this white orb. Mm -hmm. Um, and he's just watching, yes, yes. So, you all, uh, at least the blue wizards and Glorfindel disembark from the ship. And Gilgalad comes and greets you and just says, Welcome, my lords, to Linden. This is my realm. Um, but I understand that you are here on important business. Uh, yes. I mean, important is a little bit of an understatement, I would say. You know, we're here to save Middle-earth again. Uh, this must be... Oh, Saruman cast invisibility. He put on a <laughs> ring of power and is got there. We go. All right. Apparently, I'm having things and I'm not seeing it on my end. So I'm like, I'm gonna refresh real quick. Oh, okay. Well, you look cool. much better. Yeah, your you do. Looks much better in your yeah. I, I think I just needed to refresh. Okay. Okay. Great. Cool. cool. Uh, yes, quite. Um, yes. The 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 importance is is dire and urgent. 
Uh, our realms are being threatened every day on all sides by forces of Sauron. And I don't need to tell you that if Sauron were to gather even more power, we would be overrun. We are currently meeting our match with his armies to the north, but the east is currently undefended. While we do have the mountains blocking uh, the path, we are uncertain as to Sauron's intentions with the men of the east. And your services would be greatly put to good use if you were able to travel to Rune and help, <laughs> maybe convince the men of their ways and the the nature of Sauron, who has already deceived so many. Uh, well, my I can't imagine. You? Yeah, I can't imagine that would be quite difficult. We'll just tell them that he's bad, and that should be enough, right? I, uh, Pilando, is it not? Yes, I have a name. <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> yes, yes, you, you do. Um, you are not, um, forgive me, my lord, but you are, uh, new to these shores. Oh, yes, I'm new to everything. Yes, well, there are many things that have changed and are new in this world that you may find, um, how shall I put this? Fascinating? Depressing. Oh, However, I've been depressed before. Look forward to it. <laughs> well, I hope that you are not depressed for long. I, uh, I know that this is this is a large task, and uh, the might that the Valar have sent to our shores is clearly evident of the size and enormity of it. But, um, well. <laughs> You go with our blessing, and uh, if you need anything, please let me know. But we will help you in any way that we can. Um, one thing I will say is that there is one more in your party who is not here, but you will meet him. Uh, his name is Bandashathar, and he is a dwarf who resides in the Blue Mountains. However, he has already traveled ahead and we'll meet you uh, in a land just outside of Linden. Uh, it's it's a peaceful land. There's not much there to it, but at the crossroads of the Old South Road and the Great East Road, uh, that is where you will meet him and he will guide you the rest of the way for his people come from the East. Uh, so look to him. Uh, Sauron, is there... Uh, Anything you need to say or impart to these? You said so much already. And he looks directly at Palando. But he is correct, young one. This place, these men, they are fickle. If Sauron, if Sauron, not Saruman. <laughs> oh, no, don't you look at me. I didn't right? know what you're doing. I don't know what you're talking about. I'm not going to be evil for like a couple of millennia. Uh, <laughs> yeah. um, if Sauron really is influential, then it would be wise for us to correct this as soon as possible. Yes. Well, it looks like the student of Morgoth has become the menace since my absence here in Middle-earth. Saruman, I'm glad to see that you'll be part of our party. I feel better with you on our side. I wish I could say the same. <laughs> um, <Whoa>. Yep. <laughs> I'm going to give a Benny uh, to you for that. Um, <laughs> 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 but Saruman. his smile he he, he has a <laughs> um a a soft smile that hints that there was a level of a joke for lack of a better word in mm -hmm. that statement though feel free to read it however you wish no, i think Lorfindel uh raises his eyebrows and then like cocks his head back and lets out this like kind of like earth splitting laugh <laughs> just like this huge like 
<laughs> that like makes the air itself kind of quiver. Uh, when they throw their head back down, there's this kind of like fierce beauty uh, ringing in their eyes, uh, like lightning embodied in a person. Ho ho! Japes and jokes! Uh, Saruman, you are full of wonders today! Well, my good man! Uh, and steps forward and actually like claps you on the shoulder if you'll allow it um not like an intimidating way but in like a brethrenly way like claps you on the shoulder all too familiar a bit and says well if anyone knows just how corruptible these what these men folk are it would be myself and saruman over here we've well i can't speak for you but as on my end back when i was here the last time <sighs> poor humans they uh they really can't see past their own greed sometimes much the better that we come here and show them the right path. Quite, says Gilgalad, <laughs> looking at the awkwardness of the situation. Um, I imagine Alando and Alatar just kind of like look at each other and don't say anything to each other, but... Yes. Uh, uh, I'll describe Alatar briefly. Um, uh, Alatar is clad in uh, look, what looks like newish robes. Um, uh, you can kind of see them in the in the turnarounds below, but they're, they're also a blue hue, almost uh, a sea haze kind of blue. And uh, they also carry a large staff and um, they wear a hat, not dissimilar to this, um, but blue. And uh, they are are sort of sitting there taking in everything um and uh they have long gray hair which is kind of dark black in the front but has started graying down the sides and is pulled back into a ponytail and um uh she just looks like um an an older woman you who you can't quite tell how old she is honestly all of the wizards have that kind of wizened look but you can't really tell that they're that old they certainly don't act their age as it were um and she's just sort of taking things in uh as as they're coming um Gilgalad uh, then says, then make all haste to rune. However, um, Glorfindel, if you can, um, please understand that we need all the help that we can get. So if you can, at your earliest opportunity, please make your way back to Eregion, where our forces are in dire need of a commander of your skill. Oh, yes, yes, of course, of course. Don't worry, don't worry, you look so <laughs> worried, my dear king, my dear lord. You know, we, elves, it takes a lot to age us, but this stress, it's not good for your skin. Have a breather. <laughs> uh, and Chlorfindel sort of pivots away from Saruman to look at this king and also kind of pats the king on the shoulder in kind mm. of like, a, almost like a patronizing way, just like a pat, pat, mm -hmm. pat. Uh, don't worry, this will be over in a, in a blink and a hop and a skip and a wag of a lamb's tail. Is that something people still say here? Uh, not not in a thousand years, but it's uh. understood. Thank you. Uh, I appreciate your enthusiasm. Uh, with that, uh, I bid you adieu. Um, Travel is arduous, especially over the mountains, but uh, I'm sure with Bundish's help, you will be able to make it safely. Uh, and with that, he guides you and walks with you to the gates of the Grey Havens and uh, out, and you are now on the main road. And... Uh, you travel for uh, a couple of days and you find yourselves um, eventually um, arriving at what looks like uh, a, a crossroads. You see basically the, the, the landscape is grassy and there are some trees, but not really like a forest uh, to speak of. 
and very hilly, just rolling hills. Uh, and you you don't um, Glorfindel especially, but but also the wizards. You you get the impression that you are being watched as you go, but every time you turn to see, you, you don't see anything. Um, it's just silence. Um, so you kind of uh, walk continually until you towards the road and you see the road kind of continue on towards the east and then there's another split that starts edging kind of south southeast from here and you hear a hearty uh greeting as a dwarf comes out from behind a rock and greets you bundish tell us what you're doing so Bundish um, pops out and just goes, I, I see, I assume you're the ones I've been looking for. Um, Bundish, it's a pleasure. I'm going to be your guide. And you see Why Bundish, would is... you assume that we are the ones that you should be looking for when many walk these roads? Well, uh, to, be, to be frank, uh, there are not many other elves as gorgeous as, and I point to you, <laughs> Glorfin Glorfindel. Glorfindel. I seen Glorfindel, correct? Uh yeah, yes, of course, of course. Oh Saruman, ever the watchful eye. But you're absolutely right. None here rival my beauty. That's not a brag, it's simply a statement of fact. Bundush, yeah. charmed. The pleasure. And you're Saruman from what Glor Glorfindel just said, and you Oh, uh... sorry. Polando, I'm sorry, I was staring. Uh... I've never seen a dwarf before. Excuse me. I would, I would love to. I, I know we have time to travel, but I would love to converse. You tell me everything about the dwarves. I, I know we won't be able to see your city, but perhaps after I can do a tour or something. I don't know. I'm talking a lot. I'm sorry. No, it's fine. No, honestly, um, I will give you, let you know that you're not gonna find a dwarf better looking than me. So it goes, it goes downhill from here. But we're still great folk. Um, and. <laughs> As I say this, um, you see a dwarf, a black dwarf, um, with fiery, like almost like ombre hair. So it goes from like a dark brown to a flaming and ye orangey yellow at the tips of his beard and his long hair that drapes down to almost the, like the middle of his back. Um, on he's wearing honestly pretty beautiful armor, um, just many bl blacks and greys and silver armor, um, and uh, I think the, the only thing that's kind of like, I guess for lack of a better term, messed up are his boots. So leather boots, they can tell that he's been, he's probably worn through far too long. He's, he's in, he's in due a new pair, but doesn't seem to want to get rid of these, this set. Um, on his waist is a small hand axe. They can tell he's seen many a battle. The, the handle of it itself is very clearly worn while the blade has been, um, over and over again sharpened you can tell that it probably has a few more uses before he's going to need a whole entire new one um but on his strap his back is a large axe a large battle axe almost the size of his like the handle itself is almost the size of his torso entirely and they're just enormous blades that that even compared to the um armor he's wearing is just resplendent um and seems to glisten in the the light um almost um almost unnaturally he seems he seems very attached to this blade this um axe and he's keep taking good care of it and he walks over to everyone and like reaches out a hand to give a handshake um for spurs to and like shakes it very firmly probably not able to oh. shake them i don't know but he's like putting a lot of strength into it doesn't seem to be doing it on purpose but it just is how he is then goes over to saruman and raises a hand absolutely does not raise a hand back <laughs> he just stands there for a good like good 30 seconds goes no 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 okay he <laughs> goes over uh and goes over to um god i need to pronounce how do you pronounce your name i'm terrible with Polando. you know what Polando. goes over to Polando. and goes are you you're a handshaker no, I, just, I just stick it out and we grip, yes and then grip we and shake. then you shake yes ha! You're good at this. This is. Fun. And then you keep going. How long? Do no, you no, go? you can let go now. You can let go. Okay, okay. You can like maybe five, five, six seconds is the appropriate amount. Five if you're good friends, maybe longer. Yeah. 
Um, and go to Alatar as well and do the same if, uh, if they... Alatar very, very graciously uh, shakes your hand. And it feels very warm. Uh, and uh, you, you, feel, you feel better for her shaking their hand. <laughs> oh. <laughs> um, yes, so... Oh, good grip on you. <laughs> you uh, then continue on about your journey, uh, knowing that you basically need to stay on the East Road. And, and Bundish, you, you are very familiar with this... This terrain, this territory, you are heading towards uh, the great Dwarven ki Kingdom of Khazad-dûm, and uh, you know that um, things are good. However, you do know that, that agents of Sauron are always about, that there are orcs who make patrols, there are um, visions of evil that you don't even know, um, and they are constantly um, vigilant. However, this area that you're in has, for the most part, been controlled by the elves and 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 also the men of um, the world. Uh, and uh, but primarily, this is Gilgalad's control, and and so you you know that you can be relatively safe here. Um, Saruman just looks down literally at Bundash um, and says and his hands on his uh, hand, like fists on his um, hips and looks up at you <laughs> doesn't seem phased by the incredible height difference, prob probable power difference as well <laughs> <laughs> uh, and uh, again as a level of sizing up um, more so just uh, ascertaining what you can do just from surface a reading, but then says, "So you are to be our guide." Yes, no one knows this land like me. So what should we expect? Oh, um, well, for the most part, we should be safe. You know, of course, the Sauron's um, agents are always going to be making their moves, but here's more or less a safe haven. Keep an eye out, regardless. I don't know if I've been the only one, but I have been occasionally feeling like I've been watched. So. Oh, yes, I was going to ask, are you the one that's been following us for the past few days? Or is that someone else? Uh, no, I was just, I was waiting for you by the crossroads. That wasn't me. Ah, I, I assumed I it see. was you, but I had only just seen you arrive, and not many people can get past my gaze. Oh. Perhaps Sauron's forces have already encroached upon territory even the elves control all the way out here by the west. That is my fear. I would... That would be quite interesting. We are not going to just casually swim over the fact that you just said that we've been followed for a couple of days. Well, yes, haven't you felt it? I, I felt thought it was that, pretty obvious. I felt that too. I thought I yeah, thought yeah, I wasn't yeah. sure. I thought that's what being alive was. <laughs> oh no. No 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 no. Being being alive is very different from being watched. Mm. Similar. Is there something because... we've noticed, Dom? Um, you probably are aware, um, honestly, Sauron is probably way more into, um, you're trying to figure out how to defeat Sauron, <laughs> mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. to be, to be, Anyways. yes, and you're a little bit more preoccupied with that than Palando and Alatar and Glorfindel are. Gotcha. And, um, but you do all have heightened senses. Glorfindel's probably the most acute of any of them, but, uh, um, so yeah, Palando, Alatar, and Glorfindel have, have felt eyes on them, but, um, have not been able to actually see anything. Um, you just see grassy plains and, um, magnificent oak trees, uh, and, rivers and creeks and uh just it just looks like a very lovely land that you're going through and can i make a check of some sort like sure. is there a perception check or something to yeah make a perception give me a notice <laughs> roll give me a notice roll. notice is that a skill okay it is a yep. i don't add anything to it do i, I just no nope. it's just going to be a plain notice roll Ooh. great so Ten. you got a five that's a five so you don't add five. them together yeah um, 
Uh, so that's a five, which is a success. So your target number is a four, generally, for most things. Um, uh, so you, um, you do, out of the corner of your eye, you glimpse uh, a shape kind of duck down. And as soon as they do, you lose it. Like, it's, I mean, it's as in you have no idea. You, you were sure it was right there, but now it's gone. You don't know where it went. It just disappeared. Oh, over there. Uh, and Glorfindel's just going to point very casually, like in the direction where they saw the shape. Uh, Glorfindel has heightened senses. They have eagle eyes. Mm -hmm. So before this person ducked down, were they wearing anything with any sort of writing on it? Or like, did I catch anything more than just a blur? So what you saw was it looked like a mound of earth um, rising up and then quickly dropping down with grass on it oh. and everything. Some sort of earthy, dirt, rock thing with grass all over it. Uh, are there talking rocks in this part of Middle Earth? Bundish, give give me a notice roll, if you would, please. <laughs> okay. Quick question. Um, notice has a star next to it on my character sheet. Is that anything special? Um, I don't think so. Uh, let me look at your okay. sheet real quick, but... No, the, the 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 star just indicates that this is a skill everyone has, okay. regardless. Yeah. Nice. So you also got a five. So, um, you do recall. So you kind of saw what Glorfindel saw, um, but not as well as Glorfindel saw it. Glorfindel saw almost the blades of grass that were there. Uh, however, this does spark a memory of yours that there are people who inhabit this part of the world uh you know them as harfoots and do, do i know them as a danger at least right now um you don't uh you don't know them as a danger necessarily in fact you barely ever um run into them uh but you've you've only maybe uh encountered them once or twice uh in the grand scheme of things uh and almost always at a distance and um almost always uh for a moment or two but you've never you've never heard of anybody fighting or um you know having bad encounters with them or anything of that nature oh okay i think i saw i think i saw them duck back down it might be a half uh they're, they're, they're not too much trouble they're they usually at least from what i understand peaceful folk i haven't really run into them more than a couple of times and usually at a distance um so oh. as long as they don't, I don't think they, they mean us any trouble. Honestly, just curious to see why us as a group are traveling together. Ah, uh, yes, I understand. Well, uh, hail and well met, friend. If you would like to gaze upon the glorious Glorfindel up close, you can come out. I don't bite yet. <laughs> Nothing moves. The, the, all the grass across the plain just sways in the breeze. Uh, and you don't see anything. And in fact, you've at this point, you've lost that original pinpoint that you had. You're not sure exactly where that was anymore. Every the, the landscape just looks serene and uh, nothing, nothing of note. Saruman oh. just sighs heavily and says, you're looking for a boring beast and clearly you have mistaken your own sight. It is time to continue. Yes, time is of the essence. You are right, my good, kind, uh, long-haired, bearded friend. Uh, Palando, unless there are any particular curiosities you'd like to uh, satiate here with these hard foot, I figure we should move along. Yeah, Palando's like got like a, a small stick bug and goes, no, I, I, I think we're good. Um, so, 
you you continue uh sorry one second i need to um sorry i'm speaking with with our second blue wizard right now i'm dead um really quickly get to, uh, sorry i had to step away <laughs> my house got really cold really fast it was a hard fit yes yeah. gotcha yep he still calls it a burying beast because mm-hmm. clearly doesn't care about a hobbit <laughs> right right <laughs> yeah well they're not they're not hobbits yet, they're, not, they're really. halflings yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. just still yeah so yeah they're, they they um very there, there isn't a, a a shire to speak of or anything yeah. uh, at this point. So yeah, this is they're just Harfoots. Um, so uh, as you go, we um, you kind of get to a point where the landscape kind of breaks up a little bit and mists start flowing in, and the rolling hills kind of give way to rocky outcroppings. And um, the air feels a little bit heavier here. And Bundush, you know that this is the area of the Barrow Downs. And this is where the men of yore were buried. Uh, High kings, uh, queens, soldiers, um, people of note were buried in in essentially Barrow graves, these these tombs uh, of the hillsides. And um, uh, and that this is this is where they live. Bundush, um, mm-hmm. actually, uh, Sauron, Glorfindel, and Palando, give me a notice roll. I'm given like the classic like tour guides speech when we're walking through this like <laughs> here and they're like telling people where each person was buried oh my god this wig <laughs> okay uh you said a notice roll yes how do we uh do that i don't see my token anymore yeah token. i'll just oh you can just roll. just do your uh just do your character sheet so uh on the upper oh. right the little the three people up there if you click on that Ooh. you should see Ooh, your... i see it yeah. thank you Okay, Saruman, you got a four. That's a success. I'd see it. I'd see it. I got a four. Uh, Polando got a five. That's a success. Uh, I think I. Oh, I don't think I did it. Um. Notice. Do I just hit the the die? You, you oh, sh- there it is. Okay, yeah. cool. Nice. Okay, so you all succeeded. Um, you all noticed something on Bundush. Uh, you see on his finger, on his right middle finger, you see a ring. And this ring looks it, 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 not exactly simple, but also not terribly ornate. Um, however, you all get the sensation that this ring is something different. And Sauron, you know that there are rings of power in this world. And you know that the Dwarven Lords were given seven of them. This seems like it could be a ring of power. However, you're not sure. Bundish, you are... um, you are giving your tour guide speech, and uh, that's perfect, by the way. <laughs> and you are, <laughs> you are letting people. Oh, this is where uh, uh, King Neobrand was uh, buried uh, when, when uh, after he fought, uh, that he died fighting this orc, and this. And you're just basically given the 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 whole runaround of it. However, you feel a pulse within you. Um, you feel your heart beat quicken. And um, you get the feeling that there is something nice in these barrows. You sort of get a feeling that there might be gold or gems or something of value, of wealth, uh, 
buried with these bones um, that's that's in these things. And I want you to give me uh, give me a spirit roll. So just click the the six next to your under your spirit and your attributes. If I click the six, uh, it prompts me to change the dice type. Uh, I think I just click the word. You gotta click the word. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. 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 Oh. <laughs> okay. Oh, child. Oh, child. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That that is that is that that's a failure. That's a three. So that's a failure. However, with the bennies that you have, you have many things that you can do with these bennies. You oh, can yeah. spin the benny to re-roll if you like. However, if you roll. Two ones, a double one, one on each die. That is a critical failure and something very bad will happen. However, if you just fail, you just, it's just a failure. Uh, but if you succeed, you succeed. Do you want to spend um, a Benny to reroll that? You know, I'll spend a Benny and I just need people to sub to the Kofi to give me more. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's right. <laughs> That's right. Yes. If anybody subs on our on our Kofi, Coffee, Kofi, whatever, uh, you can give bennies to our players here. So to spend a Benny on your character sheet, the those little circular things on the right yeah. hand side, you see the number four. If you click yeah. the number four, you will spend a Benny. There okay. you go. There it rolls out onto the screen. OK. Um, all right. Roll again. Roll. Nice. Okay, so you got oh, a six, yeah. so you aced that, and you got another two, so that Good. is an eight. So you succeeded with a raise. Uh, you are able to um, fight those feelings. Uh, you've you've encountered this before, and although there is a strong tug for you to um, explore and maybe dig into one of these tombs you are you are able to tamper that down um the I'm other probably giving the tour kind of speech and it's very suddenly stop and stare just for like a good 10 seconds just stare at one of the the sites the grave sites and just yeah oh um sorry where was i uh, and this goes right back to oh, you you right like back. King Calvaro and his <laughs> yes, yes, King Calvaro. <laughs> That's right. Um, yeah. So uh, um, you all kind of get a feeling that this ring is 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 not just a normal ring, but honestly, so far Bundush hasn't really shown any sort of anything towards it like it, it doesn't seem to have affected bundish in any way that you would be familiar with in terms of evil <laughs> or whatever <laughs> um yeah so it's getting dark uh and honestly you've been you've been on the road for days um this this is not just like you can go in a day to to ruin um we're talking hundreds and hundreds of miles uh but um you've you've taken rest you've taken stops here and and then you have reached these uh the barrow downs with uh with a scant amount of daylight left and honestly as the mists sort of roll in the the night comes on a little bit faster as you're out here i think as we're walking um uh saruman is Amongst just generally walking in and trying to not vibe with these people, but also keeping an eye out. Um, he's always watching every now and then to see what Palando's doing, Palando and Alatar are doing, mm -hmm. to see if they are catching up, catching on, to see what they're going to bring to this proverbial table. Uh, would, but yeah, I would say Palando and Alatar probably speak to each other a lot telepathically. So they're not actually. So they don't often have conversations, uh, because they, or at least not, uh, speech ones. 
Do you think in the boat right here, Glorfindel picked up on that? Like, notice that like, you yeah, would, like, get really quiet? You and probably like, very much notice that, that we almost never speak to each other, but we're always right next to each other. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's cute. That's perfect. That's what I needed to know, because he definitely trying to read your mind just to see uh, if he can <laughs> um, uh, get anything just from that. Doesn't need to be anything special, but just every now and then he's just peering in. Um, but more more importantly than that at this moment which is surprising every now and then he just kind of watches bundash and watches to see if he's doing anything with the ring if he's like fiddling with it if it's anything in particular um, bundash are you doing anything like that i don't think i don't think he's he's fiddling with the ring if anything i think you see that he kind of especially if we're if we're during rests you definitely see that he kind of like plays around with his axe, his um, the axe strapped to his back, and takes it off and just like very casually flips it in his hand. I don't think he ever like really visibly acknowledges that he has the ring on. I'm gonna say he is so absolutely uncaring about that mundane item called an axe. Um, <laughs> um, <Bunnish> um, loved it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but uh, noted, um, then I just think, and this is slick, and Dom, tell me what I can do with this. Um, one of the times when we're kind of like slowing down, um, he would reach out telepathically to Bundesh okay. with the intent of it not seeming like it's him. Um, and he'd say, the jewelry you have on, how long until it controls you? Okay. Um uh, I like this. Uh, let me see here. Um, He's wondering, he just wants to get a reaction in some way, shape, or form, but not even a hint that it could come from him. So mm. uh, you uh, you give me a spell casting roll. Yep. <laughs> uh, <laughs> boom. Yeah. Oh, hey! nice. Wow. Damn. 14. Dang. Okay, that is okay. Um, uh, <laughs> How good of a success is that? <laughs> that's that's a really good success. Um, <laughs> that's a success with a raise. With a raise. With so it's a success with two raises. Um, uh, okay, Bundish. Yeah. Give me a spirit roll, just like you did before. Spirit. Do you want to reroll that? <laughs> Um. No, I'm kind of curious about what would happen there. No, I'm okay. gonna reroll it. Okay. So yes, Bundish. Suddenly, in your mind, there is a voice. And I'm, I'm going to I'm going to tweak what he says actually because I, th I don't think okay. he would say that. I think he would say, "So much power around your finger, but are you able to wield?" So I've, yeah, you hear that. I've heard, yeah, I've heard whispers from this ring, but it's never been like, has it been anything more than like, hey, there's a, there's riches here. <laughs> or has it been like, <laughs> like or, or has it been more than that at any point? No, no. Yeah, it, it, okay. You this this ring has been, honestly, to you, this ring has been pretty good because you, you've yeah. you found veins of uh, rare. Ore, uh, and you found gold where you didn't think there was going to be gold. You found riches. Um, this axe you found through this ring. Um, there are many good things that have happened to this ring. However, yeah, it does sometimes get you into trouble, I guess. But uh, what's that compared to, you know, finding thousands and thousands of dollars worth of rich gold? What is this yeah. dollars you speak of? Yeah, um, yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> so you've been telling me how Middle Earth runs on the dollar. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> it's been crashing lately. It's weird. Uh, so, um, Paper money. That, that is weird. <laughs> um, I think. I think honestly, with the way Bundesh is, I think he grabs his axe. It's so over exaggerates. Just starts looking around. Like, did anyone hear that? I'm. I think someone's around. There is no one here other than the three of us. And I should point out that the voice I used in in telepathy is not his typical voice. Yeah, um, yeah right. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, he's just 
with that raise, it could be any voice you want it to be. <laughs> Ooh, yeah. I think it was like almost like airy, almost like ethereal in a way. Um, as his voice is much deeper, um, and he says, "Put down that thing. No one is here." I. He slowly puts the axe back. And says, I. Definitely, I'm certain mm. I heard someone in my head. And not the usual. It wasn't a, it's not a normal voice where you hear your own inner monologue. It was someone else. Oh, can you not, can you not do that? Because we can do, oh, that's fascinating. I just assume that's how everyone, that's, that's, can, no wonder everyone gets so confused. <laughs> Wait, are you talking telepathically right now? No, he was talking oh. with his voice. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> sort of freaked him out. He was like, oh, everyone's doing it. Okay. Um, well, what did the voice say? Did it threaten you? Did it say, we're watching? We are the Harfoots come to take our vengeance. Uh, I mean, I, I don't think Harfoots can speak through the mind. I, I mean, I haven't heard tales of that, but they were asking about or at least telling me about such great power uh, I have around my finger. Uh, oh, you mean that ring? Yeah, that really weird we ring you have. I mean, y yes, I, I, that's what I'm guessing. Uh, and as, as you say that, you all start hearing cold be hand and heart and bone. And cold be sleep under stone. Never more to wait on stony bed. Never, never till the sun fails and the moon is dead. In the black wind, the stars shall die. And still on gold, here let them lie. Till the dark lord lifts his hand over death's sea and withered land. And as you hear that, absolutely not. <laughs> Bundus looks to uh, Saruman and says, you were saying, as he pulls his axe back out. <laughs> it seems the, the Harfoots have gotten hungry. You see figures appear, and uh, you suddenly find yourself surrounded um, by figures that look a little bit like this. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> no! Uh -huh. I yes. love it. Yes. <laughs> you oh, have wow. trespassed on our graves. Now you will pay me. My good spirits, I do apologize that we've trespassed. But it does seem as though your rest is necessary. Um, and they just come closer to you all. And they, they're just, they have the skeleton, skeletal hand, basically. They're, they're clad in black with skeletal arms and skeletal hands and just glowing orbs where their eyes should be. And skull um uh just a skull basically uh animated and um they just get closer and as they get closer you feel a sense of a, a chill goes through you and um everybody give me a spirit roll i've had great luck with spirit roll you have had great luck ghetto uh, okay. Oh, uh oh. Yeah, no, that's a success. That's a success. That was barely a success. <laughs> oh, nice, Nine. Oh, actually, Saruman, that is not a success. It's a oh, spirit. Oh, never mind. It's a spirit Benny. roll minus one. Minus one. Benny. Well, don't okay. we get uh, because we're strong willed as Myar has. Uh, oh. plus two to test of smart so, spirit. So, yes, thank you for, for making that point. Glorfindel, Sauron, you are both 
fear less. You are unaffected by this. Um, oh, great! Never mind. I don't uh, know. Yeah, <laughs> sorry. I, <laughs> I can't. I, I can't have everybody sheet up, unfortunately, at once. But I'm trying. Um, no, you're good. It's not all my sheets. I didn't even know. All good. Uh, uh, Bundush. Um, uh, let's see, Bundush. What did you get? You got a. Oh, I see it now. You got a four. So, so that's a success. Polando and Alatar. Yes, you are strong willed. However, this is not a test. This is a fear roll. Um, I rolled uh, a nine. That's good. So you actually got an eight, which is a success with a raise. So you are essentially like fearless. Um, uh, you all are taken aback and you feel the chill kind of run straight through your bones as these creatures come closer to you. And we are in a combat. 